in the house tonight. Everybody's have a real good time. And we gonna make you lose your mind. Something, something, something real good time. How's my hair? Great. It's 616. It's one below zero. All I got today was 11 below zero. You know what that means. I had to actually button the buttons on my coat when I went out. It's terrible. I did get up to three above today, though. That was the high. And I know you were in suspense after last night, so I'll tell you that it hit one below last night before midnight. It was like 11.25 or so. So the first sub-zeros happened on the 18th, which tied the record, did not break it. I know this because I have a web browser open to the NOAA, which says the record was tied, set in 1889 and 2002. And then one of the newscasters last night said, oh, it hasn't happened in 120 some odd years. And then it's like, well, no, you forgot 10 years ago when it was that cold. I wasn't here, but... I believe the records. Anyway, hello. It is Thursday, January 19th. I'd show you the date, but I'd rather show you my strobe light again. Ooh, let's break it. Let's give you a let's give you a seizure. Whoa, what's going on? Nothing messes up the white balance like a strobe light. Yeah, this thing was like two or three bucks because it was a Halloween thing. Because it makes Halloween noises most of the time. Remember, it makes that thundery lightning. But it also works as a pretty decent strobe light. And for the, you know, half off for being a discounted uh, Halloween deal. You know me, I love my bargains. So, I got a package in the mail yesterday. And forgive my, again, I'm so nasally. Still working out this cold. I got a package from Clout. I was going to open it on camera, and I forgot. I totally forgot. I did 10 minutes, and then didn't. And then I looked down, and there's the package. So I'm going to open it today. We'll see what it is. If you're not familiar with Clout, somehow they come up with some kind of popularity rating. And I've had enough famous people retweet me enough times that I have a decent rating. So sometimes I will get perks from Clout. Clout perks. This is... I don't know. Was it unsolicited? Did I ask for this or did I? I don't know. Oh, look. It's it's season one of Mob Wives. I don't know if I asked for this or not. But uh, now I have the uncensored season one of, wow, these are some attractive ladies. Dear Influencer, a little birdie told us you've got a ton of clout. And, of course, they used pictograms instead of words. Your audience trusts you to create great content, and you tell it like it is. Your influence has earned you this clout perk. Enjoy it, and let us know if you have any feedback. So if you're not on clout, K-L-O-U-T dot com, and you're on Twitter, I don't know, you might want to sell them your information, and maybe you too can get a crappy reality show season mailed to you. That's interesting. Well, so look forward to my uh, review of Mob Wives Season 1 which will never happen because I will never have the time to watch it. I don't have the time to watch DVDs I've bought, much less ones that arrive in the mail unsolicited or partially solicited. If I did ask for it, it was so many months ago that I've long since forgotten that I'd asked for it. I don't know. that. I mean, it's free, so it sounds like something I would have asked for, but Mob Wives Season 1? I don't know. What season are they on, anyway? I could look it up, but I won't. Uh, there was a question I was going to answer on the W, and I'll have to pull it up again because I don't have it in front of me. Sorry about that. Do do do. It was from the great Dexley's Midnight Jogger, whose name I probably knew at one time and don't know now. But um, he wanted me to, I think, tell the story of my glasses. Is that what it was? Asked about your choice of eyeglasses and what made you pick them. I don't recall seeing the answer. So the story of my glasses is uh, I really like round glasses. And my favorite pair of round glasses I had 10 years ago probably. And I think if you go back and find the, the shrine of photos when I was putting them up uh, 
on the old website. You can see those glasses on there somewhere. But they ended up being old and not lasting. And what would happen is I'd go to wherever my insurance told me to go, and they would have just a paltry selection, and they'd have no round glasses at all. So I'd end up just picking something that was not very obtrusive, and then I would wear contacts all the time. So the last pair of glasses I have, which I still have as my second pair, they don't really have frames. They're kind of invisible, and they're kind of small and squarish. And I mean, they work for looking at stuff, but as a fashion sense, I like, as you can see, I like giant round frames that I can hide behind. And these actually, you can see they leave a big stripe on my nose because they don't have, there's no pads here and here. There's just the bar. And it always ends up in the wrong spot, so I kind of have a divot in my nose now where it is. But it's the price you pay for uh, wearing the kind of glasses that you want. But I went to a vintage place. Well, they're not just a vintage place, but they're like the biggest frame place in the Midwest or whatever. A place called Spectacle Shop. Uh, it's like Spectacle Shop spelled with a PPE dot biz. They're located in New Brighton, the main one. And basically I found their room of round frames, which was awesome because just having more than one as a choice was pretty cool. And these were, I think, the biggest ones. It came down to these and a pair that did have the pads on them. And I was like, well, can we do a hybrid? I was like, nah. So I ended up picking these, what, a year ago? And I kind of almost stopped wearing contacts after that because although I have basically daily wear where you put them in and then you take them out and throw them away at the end of the day, uh, I just like these. I don't know. It's part of my persona, right? It's part of my brand, that very interactive brand known as um, CRZ right there. So that's that story. And I kind of told the story in a shorter version on VU. It came down to uh, a, a mentor of mine, a nerdy guy I admired, British guy, wore glasses like this. And I was like, man, those look kind of cool. And they looked cool on me, too. So that's how I ended up being uh, one of the passionate round frame guys. has nothing to do with Harry Potter. I know you're done, I know. So lots of British guys wear these kind of glasses, although they don't have... They're probably real ones with the pads. And the other thing is they don't have these goofy around the ear kind of, uh, what are those called? Slingback, saddleback, some kind of back. Yeah. That's where my head's at. So that is the story of my glasses. And that is the story of the DVD I got. Was there anything else I was supposed to talk about and have been putting off? I was going to talk about my paper cut. It's almost healed how long it's been. I got one right on the fat part of the thumb. You can't even see it now, but it really hurts. I got it, ironically enough, opening the tea bag box. So, you know, don't use your finger as a letter opener, no matter how much you want to. You will give yourself a nasty paper cut, and it'll hurt. I was going to give you an update on my cold. It's just lingering. It doesn't help when it's 10 below outside. You can't get healthy in that weather. But it's now at the point where all the stuff that's stuffed is like in my ears, and I don't realize it until I blow my nose, and then I either hear like the really sickening sound of stuff moving through my ear, or it pops, and I realize that all day I haven't really been hearing out the ear. So, your sickness update. I was going to talk about SOPA yesterday, and I didn't. There probably isn't a lot to talk about other than now that we see the mega upload's been taken. It doesn't really seem like they need that law for the government to do whatever the heck they want, so it's kind of a shame. But for the record, Keith Ellison came out against it, which was good, because usually he's just blindly blue state no matter what. Like my senators, Klobuchar and Franken. Franken is actually supposed to be a net savvy guy, and yet he's a co-sponsor of PIPA, which is the Senate version of SOPA, which is a shame. But all politicians suck all the time. And if you ever needed proof, just the whole SOPA thing is kind of been proof enough. And underneath talk about sopa, it says talk about soup. I don't remember what I was going to talk about other than I had some chunky soup, but then I ate it, and now it's gone. And now I have nothing for lunch, and I've been too lazy to go out and get it, and I've been starving. And I'm starving right now. I'm going to go find something to eat. Yeah. So thanks for whiling away another 10 minutes with me, and we'll see you tomorrow for the big Friday thing where it'll be Friday. Bye.